All right, Dynamite. Open up with Renee interviewing Christian. He came out huge pop. He immediately turned to people. Made fun of the the Maple Leafs. Apparently there's some sports Le- team. <laughs> you say the Maple Leaves? And then out came Luchasaurus to face Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Had a good match. I thought they had a really good match. And Christian did commentary. And then, you know, Jungle Boy's running rampant. And so finally he heads down to the ring. And uh, yes, it is a distraction finish. Christian distracts Jungle Boy. Luchasaurus hits a super choke slam, burning hammer, and gets the win. It was a... Fun match. I thought it was good. And clearly, I mean, I don't know how long Christian's going to be out. I got no idea. But I would think that if he were back anytime soon, then uh, Jungle Boy would have gotten the win. So I think that that uh, he probably lost here. They'll do another match down the road, maybe the pay-per-view. Then when Christian's closer to returning, they'll they'll move in that direction. I think this was just a, a way to extend this thing out more, which they do a lot of. We had a segment with Renee, Ethan Page, Stokely, Matt Hardy, Private Party. This Stokely has uh, purchased the contracts of Private Party. And uh, so I I would presume that we're not going to be seeing old uh, Andrade back anytime soon. So they want out, and they're doing a match where Page will face Isaiah Cassidy on Rampage. If Isaiah wins, Private Party can leave the firm. However, if Page wins, Matt Hardy must join the firm. Which, in fact, is an angle we just saw in NXT recently. We had Wardlow and Samoa Joe beating Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo. This was a showcase match for Ward. Joe, as they call them. And then afterwards, there was the big run-in. Prince Nana, Brian Cage, The Gates of Agony, FTR. And this sets up the return of Sean Spears and a six-man tag coming up here soon. Sean Spears, local guy. I haven't seen him for a while. Came back as a big baby face. And we'll see if they do a lot with him after this six-man or if it's just something to do for the the local crowd. Man, that pinnacle is... uh is all together and getting cheers from the crowd. I wonder if that MJF is uh, looking at that for something in the future again. Never know. We had Swerve versus Billy Gunn. And, I mean, it was fine. Given Billy Gunn's advanced age, he's 58 years old and gigantic. I mean, he's still very agile. He did his running leapfrog, which I couldn't even believe my eyes. And they didn't do a lot, but they did enough to make the fans happy. And Swerve got the win, holding the ropes. And that's when Mark Sterling came out and announced that he owns the rights to scissor me. And therefore, the acclaimed can no longer scissor. Otherwise, they will be sued. So we'll see where that goes. We had a great MJF promo. And MJF is the devil, essentially. He doesn't necessarily like it, but it's what he is. And so, therefore, it is what he is going to be. He is a generational talent. He warned William Regal. They apparently have a past that is yet to be revealed. And he said that I know most of the locker room and many of you fans probably want me dead, but I have no choice but to be the bad guy. We had a Moxley promo with Hangman Adam Page. And, uh, man, this was like the best Hangman Page promo that I ever saw. And essentially, he's had a bad year. He's lost it all. He's lost his friends. He's lost his title. He hesitated with CM Punk, lost the belt. And he says, next week, I don't care if your family's there. I don't care if your friends are there, your child is there. I I vow, I give my word, I will be the next AEW champion. And he starts hitting himself like, I'm a man. He's bleeding all over. He's very mad that Moxley called him a nice kid, I think is what he called him last week. And I thought this was awesome. This is another one of those those feuds where, you know, they had a couple of these with Danielson, with Jericho, with Moxley, now with Paige, where it's like these feel way bigger than TV matches. These feel like pay-per-view matches after these promos. But it's a TV match on a Tuesday going head-to-head with NXT. But, man, they did a hell of a job building this thing up. Hangman was great here. Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson had a very good match. And 
at the end, as we talked about last week, you had two ways you could go after that tag match last week where Chris Jericho beat Daniel Garcia by cheating. Your two ways are, man, Daniel Garcia, he's so sick of this cheating. He's a wrestler. He's not a sports entertainer. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. He's full on with Brian Danielson. Or he realizes that Chris Jericho was right because Jericho beat him. The sports entertainer beat him, the wrestler, via cheating. Damn it, he learned his lesson. And in fact, that's the way they went. And the title got thrown into the ring, and Garcia essentially screwed Brian Danielson, helped Chris Jericho win, celebrated with him afterwards. He is now 100% back in the Jericho Appreciation Society, and I presumably will continue feuding with Brian Danielson. And Chris Jericho can look at the camera and tell everybody in the most heelish way possible, hey, I didn't cheat. I said I wasn't going to cheat. I didn't do anything wrong. He hit me with a knee. What Daniel Garcia did, I don't know, because I was hit with that knee and unconscious. Works out very well. He can't say that. You know what else he can say? What's that? I told you. I told you that a sports entertainer will always beat a pro wrestler. I did it my way, and I was victorious over you and your lame wrestling. There's a lot of ways they could go with this, as there were last week as well. Tony Storm, Makaru Shida beat Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. You'll never guess what happened here. All I keep hearing is that Britt Baker never loses. But it's like I'm watching another show. She's constantly doing jobs. And in fact, she did another job here. She got pinned by Hikaru Shida, and this sets up Hikaru Shida versus Tony Storm for the title next week. And it was a good match. And it's going to be interesting because they put him in the death spot. And we're going to have to see what these ratings are when they're... Because for some reason, whenever they're out of the death spot now, they do well. But if you actually put them in the death spot, it dies. We'll see if that happens this week. Is that the, what you really hear about Britt Baker? Though? Yes, constantly. More than constantly. nobody else is getting over. It's not that she's losing, but that nobody else is getting over. And again, this isn't her fault. It's the booking. It's a lot of other things, too, here. The booking, I guess, really being the main thing. But that's really kind of with Britt Baker. Yeah, she does lose, obviously. But I think it was like when she lost the Thunder Rosa in the un- un- uncensored match or whatever it was, the no rules match. Was Thunder Rosa any better off? I think that's the issue people have more than she never loses. Okay, listen. If you want to do the argument, she won't let anyone else get over. First off, that's, well, well, not that's her. total BS because she her. has nothing to do with any of Wait, this. Wait, hold on, because there's two separate things here. Because I'm not arguing she's not letting anybody else get over. What I'm arguing is nobody else is getting over. Now, that could be because she sucks all the air out of the room. Again, not her fault. If she's on screen, she was put there by AEW. So I don't want it to sound like she's burying people. Because other than any maybe an issue with Thunder Rosa, like there's... She where where have you heard a personal issue with Britt Baker? I have never heard of there one. There isn't so, one. Exactly, exactly. So this isn't about her burying people or not letting them get over. Again, this is more about the booking. So that should be clear. Well, yeah, and the booking is the same thing. It's like, okay, is Tony Storm not being given an opportunity? She's on the show every week as the champion. She's winning matches. She's not getting an opportunity because of Britt. I think she's getting an opportunity. Uh, is Brits holding back Jamie Hayter? Jamie Hayter's on the show every week, getting huge reactions from the fans. Yeah, they haven't pulled the trigger yet, but what does that have to do with Brit? That has to do with Tony doesn't pull the trigger quickly. And yeah, she was out there doing a job again. Am I going to have to hear about this next? Yes. Am I going to have to stand all day tomorrow again? <laughs> I'll do it. I don't care. You simp. I don't care what you nerds think about me. I'm telling you what's going on. But only Rampage. If you're a super follower. <laughs> Rampage. Yeah, I care about what they think. John Moxley and Claudio versus the Butcher and the Blade on Rampage Friday. These aren't spoilers because that have been taped. Ethan Page versus Isaiah Cassidy. Nyla Rose versus Anna Jay. That's an interesting one. Nyla's walking around with a title that she doesn't own because she stole it. Anna Jay challenged her to a match for the title she doesn't hold. So if she wins it, she can walk around with it, even though she won't be champion. <laughs> it's something. 
FTR and Sean Spears versus Cage in the Gates of Agony. Dynamite next week, Moxley versus Hangman Page for the title. Tony Storm versus Akara Shida for the title. We hear from MJF, and Renee will interview Brian Danielson and Wheeler, Utah. And then we've got the main event, Orange Cassidy Pac for the All-Atlantic title. And you knew you knew it was going to end like this. Didn't know it was going to be Orange Cassidy, but I will say when they announced this match, it's like, I never am told who's going to win, but I'll often, like, figure it out in the sense that Pac is winning all these matches with the hammer. You knew the hammer was going to cost him the title. And when they announced Orange Cassidy, it's like, man, you know, Orange Cassidy, he always gets a push, and then he loses the big one. And he gets a push, and he loses the big one. And here he's getting a push, and he was going for the All-Atlantic title. And quite frankly, it's the All-Atlantic title. There's no reason that Pac needs to be the champion or that Orange Cassidy shouldn't win the title. And so I thought he's got to be winning. And then when I found it was going on last, it was like he's winning for sure. And in fact, the hammer spot backfired on old Pac. The ref caught him. He got orange punched. And then he got defeated with a number of orange punches. And uh, and Orange won the title. Everybody went absolutely haywire. They dropped orange confetti from the ceiling. It was a happy ending to their Canadian debut. I thought the end of the show was great. It was a good match. And it was a perfect ending. Absolutely. And give a lot of credit to the crowd as well, too. It was a big crowd. I don't know what the exact number was. It was around like 7,500 people or something like that. But great reactions throughout. As it should be, they haven't been there. So when they do run again, I don't know if they're on Rogers Center or I forget the the name of the building, Molson Center. I can't remember what the name of the building is up there that the Leafs actually play in, but I can guarantee you, I don't know if it'll be a sellout if it's not a pay-per-view, but I think it'll be damn close to one. And Orange Cassidy and Pac, Pac, I should say, they were made to wrestle with each other. They are perfect opponents and Hangman Page, all these Moxley, all these other names that have gone through AEW, I will always remember Pac walking out there for that first initial press conference by the pool. Everybody else has got a suit on. He walked out in wrestling gear, just bitter, angry, nasty. He's one of the underdog MVPs of that company for sure. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid. And so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That was definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. <laughs> this is the weird thing he says. Yeah. But it is. Well, it is weird. Well, weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.